So today we're going to start chapter 15, which talks about applications of aqueous equilibrium. We're going to break this into three parts. So the first part, we're going to continue our discussion of acids and bases, uh, which is section 1 through 5, and then we'll talk about two other applications of aqueous solutions. So today we're going to talk about just 15.1, which uh, is solutions of acids and bases with a common ion. So let's talk about what's, the, what's called the common ion effect. So in this case, when we're talking about equilibrium, we're going to be talking about solutions containing a weak acid and its salt, whereas before we had just been talking about a weak acid or a weak base. And so let's say we have a solution of a weak acid, hydrofluoric acid, and its salt, sodium fluoride. Well, we know that the major species are hydrofluoric acid because it's weak. It's not going to completely dissociate. We know we also have the sodium ion and the fluorine ion because and a sodium fluoride is a salt, and it completely dissociates in water, and so then water is our fourth species. The common ion is the fluorine ion because it's produced by the hydrofluoric acid when it dissociates and by the sodium fluoride when it dissociates. So it's present in two of the species. So let's look at how this common ion is going to affect the equilibrium. So if we look at Le Chatelier's principle, we know that the Hydrofluoric acid is going to be the contributor of the H plus ions. And when it does dissociate, it's going to split up into H plus and F minus. Well, since we also have fluorine ions present in the solution from the sodium fluoride, it's kind of like we are adding product or adding F minus. And so because we're adding over on the right, that shifts equilibrium to the left. And so what that means is if we shift it to the left, we're shifting towards reactants. That means that the hydrofluoric acid isn't, is going to dissociate even less in the presence of the salt versus if it was just hydrofluoric acid by itself because that presence of that common ion shifts equilibrium towards the reactants. Well, this is called the common ion effect. And it's basically a shift in equilibrium position that occurs because of the addition of an ion that's already involved in the equilibrium reaction. So we have the addition of the fluorine ion and that shifts equilibrium towards the reactants, meaning that the hydrofluoric acid isn't going to dissociate as much as it would have if it had, if it had been alone and by itself. So let's look at another example. Let's say we add solid NH4Cl to an ammonia solution. So we know that our NH4Cl will completely dissociate, that's our salt, and so we're going to get NH4 plus the ammonium ion and the chlorine ion. And so this means that we are producing more ammonium ion. So the ammonium ion is our common ion. If we look at the reaction of the ammonia, um, it's a base so it's going to react with water to produce the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. And so this is where we're getting more of that uh, ammonium ion. And so, same as before, because we are adding ammonium ion from the salt and from our weak base, um, we're going to shift the equilibrium to the left, towards reactants. And so that means that the NH3 will dissociate less. This also applies to polyprotic acids. We know that, in general, the first step inhibits other dissociation steps, and that's because the H plus is factoring is the common ion, and so it inhibits dissociation of other steps because it's the common ion. So let's look at an example. Okay, so given that the equilibrium concentration of H plus in a one molar hydrofluoric acid solution is 2.7 times 10 to the negative second molarity, and the percent dissociation of hydrofluoric acid is 2.7%, so those, that information is given already. They want us to calculate the concentration of the H plus and the percent dissociation when we've got a solution of hydrofluoric acid and its salt. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is identify the major species. Okay, so in this case we've got hydrofluoric acid because it's a weak acid. We know the salt will dissociate, so Na+, plus, F-, minus, and water. And so we know that the species that are going to be contributors are the hydrofluoric acid and the fluorine. 
water is going to function as a weak acid or weak base, and we know that Na plus has no bearing on acid or base. And so if we write our reaction, HF breaks up into H plus, NF minus, and we know that the Ka value is 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4, and we can write our equilibrium expression as H plus, F minus over HF. Okay, so now if we do our ICE table, we know initially we have one molar of the hydrofluoric acid. We know we don't have any H plus ions. But the thing is, we know that we initially are starting with one molar of the fluorine because it's coming from the salt and we know is going to completely dissociate. And so this is what's a little bit different from problems that we have originally done. Change, we know we're going to have minus x plus x plus x, and then our equilibrium is 1 minus x, x, and 1 plus x. So if we plug those into our equilibrium expression, we're going to get x times 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x, well, we can keep the same assumption where we're saying that x is very small. So we can assume that this goes to x times 1.0 divided by 1.0. Well, 1.0, 1.0 are going to cancel. So that means that 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 is equal to x, which is equal to our H plus concentration. Okay, so we know 7... 0.2 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to our H plus. So then if we wanted to find pH, that's equal to negative log of H plus, so negative log of 7.2 times 10 to the negative, oops, that's a 4, and that equals 3.14. And now we also want to find percent dissociation, which is equal to our H plus divided by the initial concentration of our hydrofluoric acid, so that 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 1 times 100 to get our percent, and that is equal to 0.072%. Okay, so here's our pH with the weak acid and the salt. Here's our percent dissociation with weak acid and salt. And what we said initially was that the presence of that common ion, that fluorine, was going to inhibit the dissociation of the hydrofluoric acid. So that means our percent dissociation here should be much less than when it was hydrofluoric acid by itself. So let's compare those results. So we have 0.072 compared to 2.7%, so it's definitely less. And let's see, our equilibrium concentration was 2.7 times 10 to the negative 2 versus 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4. So this is much smaller because dissociation was reduced, and so we were having less H plus concentration. Okay, so we will continue with 15.2 next time. Have a good day.